a popular Python package somehow got a crypto miner. Yep, you heard it right, crypto miner. Um, important, I'm writing this post in real time as I learn more about what happened here. I'll be updating it. All right, I've reached the point where I feel comfortable making some inferences slash conclusions. These are in the conclusion section. Edit. Uh, today is the last day I'll be making updates to this post. The conclusions are now fully updated, and I have uh, say I've added a rough but comprehensive timeline of events. All right, summary. Yesterday, someone exploited Ultra Analytics, uh, Ultra Lytics, Ultra Lytics, which is a very popular machine learning package for vision stuff, trademark. Uh, the attacker appears to have compromised uh, Ultra Lytics CI and then pivoted to making a malicious PyPy release, 8341, now deleted, which contained a crypto miner. I wonder what he got out of that crypto miner, because that's pretty impressive. Like, honestly, getting a crypto miner into a popular repo these days, like, that's that's pretty impressive to be able to do. Um, update. Uh, Ultra, Ultra Lytics was compromised again. <laughs> oh, man. I feel, I, it feels bad, really, when you think about it. Uh, within 36 hours of the last compromise, this latest compromise appears to have resulted in two more malicious releases, uh, 45 and 46, both of which were released directly to PyPy and have now since been deleted. Uh, these releases appear to have been pushed directly by the attacker using an API token stolen from the uh, Ultralytics, Ultralytics CICD. Likely at the same time, they can, uh, conducted the original exfiltration and cash poisoning attack. Analysis. Here's the rough flow of what happened. Uh, the open I'm bot account opens a PR, this one, against an upstream here. This appears to be a bot account, but presumably has some underlying functionality that allowed a human being to open a PR under its name. Oh, what a great attack. That's actually really smart to have an attack that like somehow is able to do, be manipulated via a very popular bot. That's really good. Okay, PR added malicious branch name. Okay, uh, formatted the, with IFS to uh, expand spaces. Okay, so it does all this good stuff. It gets a bunch of stuff. Nice. Well done. Get wrecked. Uh, note, I haven't been able to get my hands on the pay payload yet. Uh, if you have access to it, ping me. Then gets picked up by the format YAML workflow, which was fundamentally dangerous workflow trigger. Dude, imagine having a dangerous workflow trigger that is literally formatting. <laughs> Dude, sometimes, I swear, our life is held up by, like, toothpicks and tape. Ridiculous. To get owned by formatting. Uh, the custom action is co uh, a composite action with a shell script in, in its actions YAML, including the following. Workflow changes are not permitted uh, with default token. Nice. Uh, line six above the classic uh, GitHub Actions template injection, the expansion of the GitHub head ref a head uh, ref is an injected directly into the shell's context with no quoting or interpolation. I believe this is where the malicious branch name gets injected, resulting in the payload inside of here. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's this thing right here. There's some sort of expansion here. These are Jinja templates, right? Is that what I'm looking at? Is this some? Is this a Jinja template? What what kind of templating? Or is this just get? It's not a Jinja template because there's no dollar sign in front. So this is just some sort of. I never do GitHub stuff, but this is just effectively template interpolation, but they're not escaping these. And so therefore, theoretically, head ref or whatever could be whatever they want. And boom. All right, so line six, above the classic GitHub Actions template. Okay, let's see. I believe this is where they've done the template. From here, the attacker is running a code of their own choice in a pull request target context, meaning that by default, they have access to anything a normal privileged workflow can do. In, that, uh, in particular, that means they almost certainly had or still have push access to uh, Ultralytics, Ultralytics itself, as well as to the repository's privileged caches. Either of, uh, either of these was, is an effective vector for compromising the repository contents and or the contents of its artifacts. I don't know yet how the attacker pivoted uh, this pull request target context to compromising the PyPy package that was then uploaded and eventually noticed by users. Their underlying technique there would probably be revealed by the payload inside the shell script. Yeah, I assume that they just, if you have the access token, I assume you can just do write privileges and you get, there must be some sort of automated way in which it does stuff. Can you pin this so he notices later? Yeah, I, I'll notice later. Uh, my college, uh, let's see, my colleague, Will Tan, that sounds very close to Jaya Tan. Okay, I don't know if this guy's colleague is someone we want to trust right now. Uh, pointed out that one of the uh, fixed PRs also removes cache pip from one of the setup Python sites. This suggests that the underlying vector was indeed a poisoned cache introduced after code injection. Wow, that's pretty clever. Seth Larson and E. Durbin uh, point out that the uh, Ultralytics is using trusted publishing with PyPy. They aren't using a configured deployment environment. That means they have had no additional sign-offs and other environmental protections on PyPy releases, which in turn suggests that workflow compromises 
uh, compromise was sufficient to induce a published event. Okay, so they just had it, yeah, automatically hooked up. Boom, it's out the door. Uh, Adnan Khan also pointed out that uh, the likely cache entry was also poisoned to compromise the build in this case, combined with the cache server URL exfiltration observed below. This very strongly suggests that the attacker used poisoned cache. So I'm not like a security guy, but if I understand this correctly, a poisoned cache is effectively, instead of using like NPM registry, you point to a different registry, and that thing has the same names, but those names are something different, right? That's all All it really means is that the cache is now something that has malicious code as opposed to the real code, right? I got that correct. Whatever Python says, pip, right? It's just a pip with a different registry. No? What is it then? Right, it points to somewhere else, it gets the code, it saves it as it on the system, then the system is then able to look it up and says, I already have it in the cache and it's, and it's bad. I think GitHub Actions uh, caches libs. Yes, they cache libs. It's for, I mean, I mean, it makes sense that the cache libs. Uh, regardless, uh, let's see, regardless of how the pull request target pivot occurred, it appears as though this is the triggering commit for the first malicious release. It bumps the new version to the first known malicious version and critically removes the GitHub actor check that... Uh, limited who could publish YAML triggers from the main branch. Okay, I got it. Okay. I thought I, th I thought it was something like that. Let's look at this thing. So there you go. And so the actor can be anybody. Yep. So Glenn, uh, Glenn, Glenn is now no longer the captain. Everybody's the captain now. And there you go. That's the one. And boom, just like that, published. At this point, the, let's see, the published YAML workflow is triggered on a push event for the main branch, resulting in an action run that published uh, 8341 to PyPy. I've uploaded published YAML lo uh, action log here. The uh, SDIST and the wheel for uh, 8341 can also be found in six doors transparency log right there and there. Uh, Ad Adnan Khan also points out that this uh, is the six, uh, six door transparency log for one of the 8342's distribution. All of the log entries show a push event for main. All in all, malicious versions of Ultralytics were available on PyPy for about 13 hours. That's a long time. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot of people that probably got owned by this thing. The discussion right here has lots of additional details, including some analytics of the payload in the Python package itself, which I haven't analyzed yet. Tracking the payload. I'm breaking this section out because it's proving to be in independently interesting. This is the payload or the initial payload, which now 404 is presumably GitHub has taken it down. Okay, so this, there, there's this specific commit and this file. Uh, conducted a search for similar branch names pushed by other users and discovered that this person, user ID this, now deleted, created a branch with a similar name on this date. Oh, so that wasn't that very long ago. So it's the exact same kind of premise. This branch uh, references a different payload this time in the gist. Okay, so there's just these like file, the, there's just these little file or these run, raw run. Oh, they're raw dog in a run script in here. 13 hours, dang. It's a lot of people get in fact, dude, 13 hours of a Python, a popular Python package. That has to be an insane amount of like people that got owned by this. Uh, this branch reference references a different payload this time in a gist uh that your uh, that url 404 is but the underlying gist repository is still alive oh really uh the run sh contains get standard github uh token stealers yeah your file equals this thing os type linux gnu do some sort of wow look at that little sword base wow they, they're doing a lot of stuff in here doing some some trs replacing tokens yeah is secret true? Okay, so I, there, I don't know what I don't know what what Age of Empires has to do with this, but this is an uh, a, a grep search. This is some sort of uh, regex search for is secret true. I assume so. It grabs that line, sorts them, and then base sixty fours them, and then curls out that blob. Right? Is that effectively just what happens? Is that it just takes out that information and just sends it out to some sort of some sort of place? I assume that's what it does. Right? And if it's not a Linux GNU, it just exits. It doesn't need to run. Right, the Git log for the gist suggests that this person uh, Id identity is also uh, in control of consrensys.com, which was one of the original IOCs for the dropped miner. Nice, look at that. Actually, dude used his work email. <laughs> Imagine using a work email for this. Like you know, you think you'd cover your tracks just a little bit on this one, right? Just a touch. Seth Larson observes that the stealer also steals the cache server URL, providing more circumstantial evidence for the cache poisoning hypothesis. Andy Lindenman also discovered an earlier GitHub identity. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Esmer, uh, now deleted, which appears to have been experimenting with template injections in earlier. Dang, people are just discovering all the dude. It's crazy. Email. Look at that. There you go. 
a nice UUID for your email, proton.me. Uh, this, le uh, this led to another gist, this right here, Morning Joe. Nice, more, a little Morning Joe. Uh, creating a new file with a cup of co uh, coffee ASCII art in the repository. Morning Joe, do a little bit of this, 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 this. Okay, so that's the goal is that he could search on this thing. Uh, this good log uh, for the gist suggests that the identity goes back to uh, 24-1201. Okay, so not very long. Brand new account. Uh, this email identity is also separate uh, from the one associated with the gist above. There's another UUID. Uh, would Zizmore have caught this? So I don't know what Zizmore is. I assume Zizmore is some sort of GitHub monitoring system. is a static analysis tool for GitHub Actions. It can find many common security issues. Yeah, okay, this makes sense. Probably a good thing to have. Uh, one would assume this is probably a good thing to have in your life. Primogen, it would have uh, the UUID social features on all UUIDs. We can see who liked the email. Oh, that's true. If if all UUIDs.com had that social feature, we probably would have seen a trending UUID under that guy's name, and we would have been able to know who it was beforehand because he would have picked out his favorite UUID, which became the email, and then we would have known, and then from there, would have been able to catch him. See, if only if only all UUIDs.com had, had social features... It's that simple. All right. Um, passing uh, Ult uh, Ultralytics 8.3.41 directly t is supported on main, but isn't in the release of Zizmore yet. To reproduce the re release version, you can get clone Ultralytics and run Zizmore on a checkout. Uh, I've excerpted that. Let's see. I've ex excerpted the output substantially to remove the findings that Ultralytics should fix, but they're not immediate re relevant to this particular exploit. Okay. This one's almost always used. Look at that, dude. That's actually pretty, this is actually a pretty cool tool, Zizmore. Like being able to find a, a lot of these problems all throughout the code. That's pretty cool. May expand into attacker stuff. That's cool. That's super cool. Oh, what a great little tool here. You know what? This probably just makes me think you should probably run this tool. If you have GitHub Actions, you should probably do something. Yes, you blame GitHub Actions at YAML. Uh, I blame anything that has, I mean, let's just be real for a second. Anything that allows code to be executed in a privileged manner is just a, just a just a giant attack vector. Yeah, I would blame Microsoft. You can just blame Microsoft. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. And then you can also blame YAML because YAML sucks. And we can call it Rizmore instead of Zizmore uh, just because that'd be way better. You know, all, all told, Zizmore detects the key parts of the exploit chain, right? As fundamentally insecure trigger, Flags other sources, template code injections on Ultralytics workflow, including identical uses of Git pull template expression pattern that uh, that a pattern that made their custom action exploitable. At the same time, Zizmore does not detect the template injection within Ultralytic actions yet, since I haven't yet added support for auditing compo composite actions. This is being tracked right here, and this incident as good uh, impetus for any for me to begin the work on this. This is really cool. This is what a cool project, by the way. This is such a cool project just to be like, yo, this is just so dangerous. And it works. That's great. What Python package is this attached to? Ultralytics. Ultralytics. Based on everything above, here's how it likely went down. The attacker obtained code execution in the parent uh, CI context via an insecure workflow trigger, pull request target, combined with the template injection, uh, custom composite GitHub action, in uh, other words. They performed traditional pwn request of the sort... That's well understood since 2021. The attacker used Open I'm Bot as a puppet account, but also used the uh, ju this guy Juwunkovanin identity while developing their exploit. This may or may also be a uh, Jeffikmer uh, identity, which tried to exploit a different repository shortly before with a similar shell script and gist technique. At this point, it's unclear whether Open I'm Bot is controlled by the attacker or not. What's, yeah, by the way, also always a good thing to remember when you're using bots sometimes you can be compromised by things completely out of your control this is why i mean this is why this whole idea of like having many dependencies is can be kind of dangerous because many dependencies every one of those points along the way can become an attack vector and this one just seems like one that probably would never be the attack like I think a lot of people would never think about that as being an attack vector, and yet here we are. Uh, once the attacker had a code execution, they uh, used a ready-made token exfiltration script that they took directly from Adkins' excellent post on GitHub Action Cash Poisoning. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Uh, this script probably posted back to the webhook panel on webhook.site, one that we don't have access to since 
we only have their earlier run dot uh, sh attempt, not the final uh, file sh one. With the stolen cache token, they likely affected cache poisoning attack on the pip cache used by setup Python, injecting their changes into the release distributions. Those changes were a client side downloader stage patched into the safe download function and the client side minor execution uh, patched into the safe run function. I'm still curious how much like do they actually earn from this because this is a ton of work like this is many days of exploration and doing stuff just to do a a, a minor like i assume that the amount of distributed cpu that they're getting has to i mean how many because cpus aren't really effective at mining at all of anything right now and so i can't imagine that even 10,000 cpus makes any sort of like use like you must only earn pennies with 10,000 cpus Am I right on that? Like, honestly, if you were to do this, wouldn't this be much better to just try to throw throw something out there that just tries to steal credentials off of everybody's running machine? I think the point was just a challenge. Okay, if, yeah, if the point was just a challenge, then that makes sense. Because it cannot be financial. Because, I mean, must have earned... Uh, here, well, let's see. What does the uh, average CPU um, Bitcoin miner earn? average cpu one so if this is to be believed that means if you could get 10 computers you'd be there a hundred a thousand ten thousand one hundred thousand a million ten million one hundred million you'd got you'd got to get a billion computers a billion ass computers <laughs> this this obviously have to it has to be just a challenge there there's there's no financial there's no financial uh Attempt. All right, that's if you're in a pool. Yeah, that's if you're in a pool. If you're not in a pool, you have to hope you're lucky, right? Which is still, I mean, that is really, really tiny. Yeah, proof of concept. Yeah, so either it's proof of concept, challenge. I can't imagine it was um, it was anything other than those two things, right? I don't see how any of this, I don't see how it's anything else. So anyways, interesting. Crazy hack, though. Crazy hack. I, again, this just... I, I don't know what it's been, but if more and more, it just seems like every time you add a dependency, it just feels scary. And GitHub Actions have always felt a little scary, and they just feel scarier now to me. <laughs> I always worry about doing anything with GitHub Actions other than run, like, every time I put the word secret in my GitHub Actions, it's just, it just, just, just absolutely terrifying. The name. Get crypto mind.